Hi, good morning everyone. Welcome to our family service, which is actually going to be a family affair today. My name is Annette Tashiro, and I'll be your MC. Uh, please, let's see. Um, we will be now having the ringing of the Kancho. The ringing of the Kancho signifies the start of the service, so please sit quietly while the bell is being rung. Please rise. We will now have meditation followed by the chanting of the Vandanas Tisarana in Pali and English. Um, if you'd like to follow along, it, you can find it in the brown book on page 165. And our lay minister, Dennis Tashir, will start our meditation.
Please be seated. Please turn to the sutra verses reaffirming the vows on page 117 in our red Jodo Shinshu service book. Rain down upon 
and turn to page four in the red Jodo Shinshu service book for the recitation Creed 2. Casting off the self-power mind of the very practices and disciplines, we entrust ourselves single-mindedly to Amida Tathagata to save us in regard to the one great matter of birth. With one thought moment of entrusting, we know that we are saved and that our birth is settled. After this, we say the name in joy and gratitude, repaying the Buddha's graciousness. We acknowledge gratefully that we are able to hear and understand this teaching because of the benevolence of our Master having appeared in this world and of the successors in the transmission, the good teachers whose words were not shallow. Beyond this, we will observe the established rules of conduct throughout our lives. Please continue to stand and turn to page 19 in our purple WBT supplemental service book. We will be singing, May Peace Prevail, on page 19.
Thank you. Please be seated. Our speaker today is my brother-in-law, Dennis Tashiro, who is a board member of our temple. Please welcome Dennis Tashiro. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please place your hands in Gosho and repeat after me the three treasures. I go to the Buddha for guidance. I go to the Dharma for guidance. I go to the Sangha for guidance. Namo Amidabutsu. Sometimes I get technically challenged, so we'll see how this works out. The Honganji headquarters has been mailing out quarterly newsletters called Kaleo Kahea to members' homes. In the May and uh, September issue, okay, it's not working. Oh, <laughs> it's pointing down. <laughs> Sorry, as I said, I'm technically challenged. Okay, in the May and September 2022 issues of the Kaleo Kahia, Bishop Eric Matsumoto wrote a two-part article about the three treasures. He suggests that they are not three separate treasures, but rather one treasure. He quoted from the book, The Teachings of Buddha, by Bukyo Dendo Kyokai, or BDK. We speak of the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha as though they are three different things, but they are really one. Buddha is manifested in the Dharma and is realized by the Sangha. Therefore, to believe in the Dharma and to cherish the Sangha is to have faith in the Buddha and to have faith in the Buddha means to believe in the Dharma and to cherish the Sangha. Bishop Matsumoto added, if there was no Buddha, we would not know of the Dharma. If we don't know the Dharma, there would be no Sangha who follows the Dharma as shared by the Buddha. If there is no Sangha, there is no need to know the Dharma. If there is no need to know the Dharma, there is no need for a Buddha to explain the Dharma to the Sangha. He then questioned, does the Sangha, uh, is it important? It <clears throat> does it have a role? He answered, we the Sangha are nurtured by the Buddha Dharma. As a Sangha, the thoughts, words, and actions of every individual, the minister and lay, are very important and make a difference. Again, referring to the BDK book, it shares about ministers that who wish to teach the Buddha's teachings must be concerned about four things. First, they must be concerned about their own behavior. Second, they must be concerned about their choices of words when they approach and teach people. Third, they must be concerned about their motive for teaching and for their wish to, or what they wish to accomplish. And fourth, they must be concerned about great compassion. The BDK book further states that lay followers should not only believe in the three treasures by themselves, but also they should, as far as they're able, help others to awaken an unshakable faith in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, so that others too may share in the Buddha's compassion. About lay people, it says that they will enjoy happiness by habits of recollection, reflection, and thanksgiving. We'll come to realize that their faith in Buddha's compassion itself and that it has been bestowed upon them by the Buddha. 
Bishop Masumoto further states, let us, the Sangha, clergy and lay, jointly together share our awareness, understanding, joy and appreciation of the Buddha Dharma by becoming that example which shows that Amida Buddha's wisdom and compassion are indeed true and real and working in this world. Let us invite and encourage each other to listen to the Buddha Dharma. To me, for the average person, most practically and commonly, people will come to know Amida's working by looking at the life of a person of name Butsu. The bishop continues, in Shin Buddhism, I fully acknowledge my individual limitations and imperfections, including the fact that I am, many times, directly or indirectly, and totally or partially, a cause and or condition of others and or of my own suffering. I have been emphasizing that the life of a Shin Buddhist is one of responding in gratitude to the wisdom and compassion of Amida Buddha by reciting the name Butsu in gratitude and trying to live a life of guided by the Dharma. When we realize Shinji, or the Buddha endowed mind of true and trusting. Thanks to the working of other power, we find respite in a new awareness. Our respectful, warm, and harmonious relationships and interactions with people are crucial in sharing Jodo Shinshu with others. We must become more of that Sangha which others want to be a part of. We are surrounded by people who live a life of deep awareness of true compassion, the people of the Honganji Sangha. Bishop Matsumoto ends the article with, to conclude, ultimately, everything stems from Amina Buddha's primal vow. But to me, on a very practical human level, it is the Sangha members and how we live that can also guide others to discover Jodo Shinshu. It is that search for happiness that will lead people to Amida Buddha via the Sangha. Thus, I believe the Sangha is a very important and an integral component for sharing the Dharma. At our service last Sunday, Dr. Dr. Michael Jaffe spoke about the Eightfold Path. He stated that understanding the Eightfold Path and walking the path is an ongoing practice that brings awareness and perspective in our lives. The path also brings happiness. The Eightfold Path, as we learn from the Four Noble Truths, is an important way for us to relieve our sufferings and reach an enlightenment or nirvana. Members of a Sangha have a commonality of being fellow travelers along the path to enlightenment. Prior to the COVID pandemic, there were many individuals, even here in Windward Buddhist Temple, attending Sunday services here. As part of the service, the Sangha sent, chanted sutras, sanghathas, and recited aspirations. There were no masks to hinder our voices. Services were typically followed by the Sangha spending time together to enjoy refreshments, talk story, laugh with one another, and so on. March 15, 2020 was Winwood Buddhist Temple's last in-person so Sunday service before COVID restrictions were enacted. All gatherings at the temple halted and remained as such for the next 20 months. As we adapted, several temples, including our temple, began conducting services virtually via Zoom or other broadcasting method. These services were made with usually only two people together. This is Reverend Burt at the first uh, service uh, in August. While it was nice to view the services with one's computer or cell phone, we realized we were missing a large part of the temple experience. 
we could only watch and or participate from our homes, but we could not hear each other. Uh, we could not hear each other chanting the sutra or singing agatha. There were no talk story, seeing one another's face, or enjoying refreshments together. For some time, we couldn't go out and about unless we needed grocery, food, or medical items. People had meals delivered to their homes rather than going out to pick up food from the restaurant. Remember the streets were so empty, very little cars. Because of the uh, restrictions, no flying. So all the planes, where else could they park but at the airport? Costco, there were long lines just to get in the store. And of course, they were always ran out of the usual toilet tissue and uh, paper towel. At the grocery stores, these lines with little markers that says where to stand six feet from each other. And no tourists, then no cars get rented. So all those rental companies uh, put their cars together at the uh, Aloha Stadium parking. He needed gas, heck, no lines. Yeah, very few cars. And the one um, upside for me, <laughs> our um, gasoline charge card, there were several months I had zero balance owing, so that was pretty awesome. So besides, uh, you know, occasionally we'd go to Times Supermarket, Long's Drug Store to pick up a few things. We did order some bulk items from Costco online and they got it delivered right to our door. So that was a big help. I think I paid a premium, but what the heck, yeah. Finally, in-person Sunday services at our temple began in late 2021, once in November and once in December. This is Reverend Burt at the November uh, in-person service. Notice the plexiglass uh, uh, barrier. As COVID restrictions eased and the infection rates in Hawaii decreased, weekly in-person services resumed in January 2022. I think we all didn't realize prior to the pandemic that we had a good thing going. We took our own Sangha for granted, how our Sangha nurtured the Buddha Dharma in us and the love and the camaraderie we all shared. Now, we are into the fourth quarter of 2022, and we welcome back to the temple many of our fellow Dharma travelers. Together as the Windward Buddhist Temple Sangha, we again listen to Dharma messages, chant sutras, and sing gathas. We also enjoy socializing after Sunday services or partaking of Ono refreshments. Our Sangha is almost as whole as we were pre-pandemic. Last week, Saturday, October 1st, the Winwood Buddhist Temple Sangha was out in full force as we participated in the Winwood Mall Bone Dance. Many of you helped to sell fans, bone towels, nanjus, and delicious food items, including our famous takuang, bitter melon, and Andagi. Preparation involved many hours of work and donations by temple members and volunteers. The Andagi was freshly made on premise and it was wildly popular, causing a very long order line. So much so that Ryan had to do line control. Making and packing the Andagi was a huge effort. This project embodied the true meaning of interdependence. Each person's generosity, help, and energy were highlighted. A big mahalo goes out to all who donated items and to the volunteers that helped with the Andagi and who manned the sales booth. You made it happen. Have you ever thought about how interdependence and interconnectedness are integral parts of our Sunday services. Shirley prepares the program. 
Someone rings a concho. Cynthia prepares the altar by lighting the candle and incense. A greeter welcomes temple attendees. An MC guides us through the service. Reverend Bert leads the service. Joy and Lisa play the piano. Ryan records the service for online viewing. A team provides the day's refreshments. Prudence provides special activities during the monthly intergenerational services. If it's Bingo Sunday, like today, Cynthia leads that activity. And everyone present connects with each other to share the Buddha Dharma, fellowship, and aloha after the service. Here is a quote by Albert Schweitzer. Many times a day, my own outer and inner life is built upon the labors of my fellow men, both living and dead. And how much harder I must work in order to give in return as much as I have received. In his article, The Path of Gratitude, Jeff Wilson uh, stated, from the point of view of the Dharma, we can see that each being exists within an inconceivable network of support from all things, whether it's the attainment of Buddhahood or the simple act of drawing a breath. Our every action is assisted by forces beyond the ego self. As we become aware of our interconnectedness, we gain some perspective of our comic limitations. Accomplishments we counted on as our own successes turn out to be due to the myriad benefit received from others. All of life is interconnected, and each person, event, or phenomena is inter interdependent with all of the people, events, and phenomena. We are who we are through countless interactions with our parents, family, friends, and others. We did not spontaneously come into existence at birth. We are the results of our parents, of the circumstances of their meeting, and of all things even before their encounter. Things that have occurred in the past done by us or by others, whether we were aware of them or not, have affected who we are. Deeds and actions by us or others today, even strangers, may affect us in the future, big or small. Everything is always a consequence or result of something. This is the cause and effect. That is, the origin of everything is not unique. It is dependent on the particular set of circumstances having happened. A green lawn, the effect, is a result of rain and nutrients in the soil, the causes. We are all interconnected and we are all interdependent. I am dependent on and interconnected with others, my wife Merle, my two daughters, Tracy and Jennifer, my grandkids, Everly and Jet, my extended Tashira Ohana, and with you, the Winwood Buddhist Temple Sangha. Thank you for listening. Nam Mohammed Dabs. Thank you, Dennis, for I learned about the interconnection of all of us and our treasures of the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Please rise for the Gatha Arigatai, found on page 15 of our proposed supplemental book. And continue to stand for the Nembutsu.
beside the Nembutsu and trusting in the Buddha of immeasurable life and infinite light with gratitude in awareness, joy, and appreciation of Amida's immense compassion, which embraces us, never to forsake, promising that we will attain enlightenment. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Please be seated. Uh, do we have any announcements for today? Oh, Cynthia. Good morning, everyone. Prudence isn't here today because she and about a dozen other people went to a funeral this morning, and Reverend Sumikawa is also officiating the, the uh, ceremony, or the, not the ceremony, but the funeral. But thank you for coming this morning. Okay, so Prudence has given me announcements to give to you, so please bear with me. Okay, let's see. Any guests? We have one new guest this morning, and she is a guest of Ron, who we haven't seen for a long, long time. Welcome back, Ron. And her name is Karen Muronaga. Welcome, Karen. Okay. Thank you, Dennis, for conducting the service and for the Dharma message. Annette, for being MC this morning. Bob for being the greeter, Joy for the, doing the piano, Ryan for videotaping our service, and Dana and Team B for the refreshments after service. Okay, movie night is coming up this coming Saturday, October 15th. So Joy will explain to you what the movie is. I know the name is Casper, um, just in time for Halloween, but Joy, you wanna come up? No? Okay. No? Okay, anyway, it's Casper, so please join us. Cynthia. Oh, what time is it? There is a sign-up sheet on the table in the back. Oh, okay. So bring your kids, even if they're older, but also grandkids. Okay, okay. sign-up sheet. Um, Dinner. Dinner, so it's uh, right now we're planning on pizza, chicken. Uh, chicken, and a salad. Ooh, yum. Yeah, no charge. Okay. 5.30, dinner, 6.15, the movie starts. Great. Okay. Okay, and just another reminder, it's our fall food drive for the Hawaii Food Bank. And that starts next Sunday. We'll start collecting um, canned goods or whatever you want to donate to the food bank. And a box will be set up right outside, right here next to the office. And this drive ends on November 13th. So you have a period of time to bring things. Now I think it was, was it last week that we were issued a survey and Prudence had made a box, which is located behind you, um, with the rainbows on it. So she asked if you could please, um, just a reminder to um, complete the surveys and drop it off in the box. Thank you. Okay. Next Sunday, we will have Reverend Sumikawa back, and he'll be conducting the service and also giving our Dharma message. So please join us. Today is bingo, so we'll meet you there. <laughs> and are there any other announcements before we recite the words of thanksgiving? Okay, okay let's please re uh, recite the words of thanksgiving. It's located in your red book on page 126. We are truly grateful for this wonderful food, a gift of life. May we share its benefits with all beings. As we partake of this food, 
Let us remember Amida Buddha's compassion, which surrounds all people and all forms of life. Namo Amida Butsu. Itadakimasu. Thank you.